الجامعة الافتراضية السورية مقرر مقدمة إلى علم القانون والأنظمة القانونية للدكتور عماد الدين محمد تقدمت مبادرة الضوء بصوت ريم سروجي يغطي هذا التسجيل من صفحة واحد حتى صفحة واحد وعشرين من الجزء الرابع Introduction to Law دكتور عماد محمد Chapter 4 Classification of Law We have keywords Natural Law Positive Law Public Law Constitutional Law Administrative Law Criminal Law Public International Law Expression Arbitrary Detonation Sanction Crime Punishment Investigation Suspect Prosecution Threat Offenses Theft Murder Arson Aggravate Mitigate Felony Misdemeanor Conservation Capital Punishment Impersment Procedure Proof Treaty Violation Convention Introduction Various Classification The term law incorporates two kinds of law A. Natural law B. Positive law A. Natural law is a system of rules and principles to guide the human conduct. Natural law can itself be known by the rational innate intelligence, which most human beings tend to have. This concept of natural law is independent of enact law of any system, which is followed by any one particular people. Natural law can be found within whole mental, moral and physical human constitution. B. Positive law is the law which enacted or adopted by the proper competent authority for the government of an organized judicial society. This type of law will be the focus of this presentation. Positive law can be classified in two various ways. Positive law is either international or internal, municipal law governs the relations within one specific unity or commonly known as the state. B. Positive law is either public or private. Public and private law. The classification of public and private law was established by the Romans. The Romans defined public law as the law which concerned the welfare of the Roman state and private law was the law which concerned the welfare of individual citizens. Public law regulates the constitution and the operation of the supreme and subordinate authorities of the state. This includes the legislative, executive, or judicial. It includes the rules governing state administration with the private individuals. When the state represents the community, then the rules which determine its actions are part of public law. Private law is concerned with the relations of private individuals among themselves. Public law is divided into constitutional law, administrative law, and criminal law. Private law includes the whole of civil law. The civil law includes commercial and martial law. Commercial and martial law are normally separate from civil law due to their special char character. The rules of private international law are included under civil law. There is a distinction for convenience sake. Public international law is a branch of public law. These areas of law can be divided into two parts. Each part contains rules of substantive law which define the rights and duties of the persons subject to it, and also rules and procedures which are sometimes termed adjective law, defining the ways in which these rights may be exercised and enforced. This distinction is in the whole law, but its importance is within the criminal and civil law. Constitutional law Constitutional law defines the form of the state, determines the organs of its government and the limits accorded to each. It is important to know who are the members of this body, over what territory its power extends, and in whom holds the power for the state. 
All of these matters are part of the constitution of the state and are treated under the head of constitutional law. There is an important reason for describing as constitutional the fundamental rules which limit the discretion of the sovereign state and which provide the procedures by which the legality of its act may be tested. State authorities themselves are bound by the law and this is very fundamental for the establishment of the legal order within the state. Law must be laterally binding a hurting. While the people of the state are subordinate to the law, it follows that the state authority itself must be subordinate. These limitations of the will of the sovereign state are constitutional. It is the guarantee of these limitations which is the same as that which secures the maintenance of the state authority itself. There are usually three elements of government within the state. Number one, the legislative power which issues the laws. Number two, the executive power which executes and applies these laws. Number three, the judicial power which settles the disputes which arises under the law. Constitutional law deals with certain rules which guarantee citizens' liberation and rights which are regarded as essential for the individual. These liberties are rights includes right of expression and opinion, liberty from arbitrary detonation, freedom from arbitrary taxation. Administration law. The term administrative law is not often used in England. It may be used to cover the subjects treated under the head of droit administratal in France. The boundary line between constitutional and administrative law is hard to define. Mr. Bertley distinguished constitutional law as concerned with the political organization of the state from administrative law, which analyzes the mechanism of the government machine. Administrative law shows how the state actually carries on the government of the state. Constitutional law shows how the state is organized as a political entity for the performance of its primary duties of defense and the maintenance of internal order. Administrative law is concerned with the constitution and relations of those organs and of the executive which are responsible with the care of those public interacts which are the object of public administration and with the relations of the administrative authorities toward the citizens of the state. The principle of separation of power is held in France to involve the freedom of the administration from judicial interference. A person who makes a claim against the administration of its representatives concerning administrative acts done by them in breach of his or her rights cannot prosecute his or her case before the ordinary courts. Permission to take a claim before the courts is the decision of the administrative control of the judicial authorities. Simply, the civil rights and liabilities of private citizens in their dealings with officials or representatives of the state are not decided by the ordinary courts, but by administrative tribunals. Criminal law. The criminal law is part of the law of the country concerning the definition and punishment of acts, which the state intervenes to suppress. Criminal law is essentially punitive, and for this reason it can be known as penal law droit penal. There is a difference between the characters of the sanctions imposed by the criminal law and those imposed by civil law. A sanction has been already defined as a conditional evil, which threaten individuals who may disobey a rule of conduct. Sanctions may be applied either for the purpose of enforcing a right or punishing a wrong. The sanctions of the civil law are for enforcing a right. The sanctions of the criminal law are for punishing a wrong. The civil sanction aims 
at the informants of the right by the compulsory fulfillment of the duty. The criminal of penal sanction aims to secure future evidence to the rule of law by punishment for breach already committed. Although there have been attempts to make an exact definition of crime, none have been very successful. The term crime in broad sense includes all acts which are punishable under the law. What acts are so punishable depends upon the legislation of the state which reflects the idea held by the community as to the acts which merit punishment for the supersession of which the street of punishment is necessary. Criminal law chooses certain acts and penalizes them. What acts are chosen will vary at different times and in different communities. It will select mainly those acts which appear at the time to threaten. The safety and security to the conditions of social life. As such, this will make it necessary to penalize them in order to secure this suppression. The amount of punishment given will depend partly on the degree of danger arising from the act, and partly on the abhorrence felt by the community at the act which has been done. The function of the state is criminal law has been variously defined. In modern criminal administration, the state is supreme importance and differs widely in scope from that which it takes as regards the civil law. It undertakes the investigation of matters which seem to involve offenses. Against the criminal law, it provides for detection of crime and the capture of suspected persons. Special tribunals are established to which persons accused of crime are brought and the prosecution itself is generally in hands of a state representative. Criminal law has developed along with the increase of the power of the state, which has become more and more responsible for the maintenance of public order and the demand for public justice. Social defense is usually the basic which allows the right to punish. This is because the community needs to be protected against criminals. So, therefore, the need of punishment arises. When the state inflicts punishment, it is acting as a representative of the community at large. The role played by the state in criminal administration and the public character of criminal justice justifies the inclusion of criminal law under the head of public law. Criminal law commands the prohibition from particular acts and threatens punishment of the prohibition is broken. Criminal law is a definition of the various kinds of acts which it seeks to suppress. These acts include murders, arson, and theft, including the penalties which should be given to those who commit them. In addition to offenses and punishments, the criminal code should contain rules dealing with the limits of the applications of the law and with those circumstances of a general nature which modify or nullify criminality or aggravate or mitigate penalties. In the Syrian criminal code, crimes are divided into three categories, dependent upon this, their importance. Felony, misdemeanor, contravention. Felony is a crime which is punishable by death, capital punishment. Life imprisonment or imprisonment from 3 to 15 years. Misdemeanor is a crime which is punished by imprisonment from 10 days to 3 years and or by a fine of 1,000 Syrian pounds or more. Contravention is a petty offense whose punishment consists of imprisonment from 1 to 10 days and or a fine whose value varies from 1. The Law of Criminal Procedure Criminal law is connected to the law of criminal procedure. This includes the subject previously referred to as coming under the head of procedure. So far, at this relate to criminal process. The history of criminal procedures 
reflects the fundamental beliefs and traditions of different people through the ages. The belief that in taboo is a belief in magic. A person who broke a taboo feared being punished by agencies from the magical or spiritual realms. This was based upon a deep belief in the gods or God intervening in human affairs. For example, a person who had been suspected of a crime was made to walk over not plus shares with their naked feet in the belief that God would protect the person if he or she was innocent. Current methods of proof and prosecutions are based upon beliefs in increasing strength in the natural order of the universe. The present rationalistic methods of prosecution and proof are based upon beliefs of increasing strength in the natural order of universe. Public international law. The law of nations or international law can be defined as the body or legal law which are building upon state and other international persons in their relations with the one and another. Although the rule of international law are mainly those which govern the relations of state, they are not the only subjects of international law. International organizations and also individuals may be subjects of rights and duties imposed by international law. This is why the term uh, and uh, other international persons are included as subjects of the law of nations. International law is recognized as law. Governments of different states believe that they are legally and morally bound of the law nations. Also, the public opinion of all civilized nations considers every state legally bound to comply with the rules of the law nations. State recognize the rules of international law as legally binding in many treating, but they also affirm there is always a law between them. They recognize this law by their municipal law, ordering their officials, their civil and criminal courts, and their subjects to observe such conduct as it in conformity with the duties imposed upon their sovereignty by the law of nations. Violations of international law are frequent, especially during war. Those who breach international law will try to prove that their acts and or conduct are not violations of international law. They will state that they have a right to act as they do according to the law of nations. They may even state that there is no rule within the law of nations which opposes or condemns their acts or conduct. However, when states breach the law of nations, they never deny its existence through their aims to interpret the law of nations are justifying their acts or conduct. The fact is the state that states, in breaking the law of nations, never deny its existence through the endeavor to interpret the law of nations as justifying their conduct. The frequency of the violations of international law can be imposed a severe strain of their legal force. However, the formal affirmation of its binding nature is still significant. Sources of modern international law are international conventions generally or particular which establish rules expressly recognized by contrasting states. 2. International customs as evidence of a general practice accepted as law. 3. The general principles of law recognized by civilized nations. 4. Judicial decisions and teaching as the most highly qualified public publicists of the various nations as a contributing means for the determinations of rules of law. نهاية هذا التسجيل.